Hey everyone, this is Neil once again from The Overtalker. So today what I have for you is the Corsair, now listen carefully, H150i Elite LCD. So this is the latest cooler from Corsair. In fact, it's the most premium cooler. I suppose the name Elite says it all, right? I previously looked at an Elite cooler before, if you remember, and I genuinely liked the cooler. I thought it was brilliant for what it was and pretty awesome, you know, just like a natural evolution of the RGB coolers that Corsair has had over a while. So I was kind of shocked to find out that there's a newer version. Well, let me not say shocked, that's a strong word. I was surprised like, oh, so they've got a new version. And obviously the new version doesn't necessarily add a lot more to what you are familiar with, but it does add something pretty significant. And that is of course, as suggested by the name, the LCD screen. So this LCD is like the centerpiece of this entire thing. So what we're looking at is the 480 by 480 IPS display. So obviously 24 bit and whatnot. So this display around it, there's actually a ring that has, I think 28 LEDs as well. So these LEDs are programmable or rather you can configure them separate from what you are seeing on the LCD, of course. So that is more than just the LCD. There's actually some LEDs as well around the LCD. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, hey man, I just bought the, the Elite Cooler, right? I just bought the Elite Cooler. How, how can Corsair come out with a new cooler so quickly after that one was introduced? Well, there are two things I would say to you. Number one, you're not old having like the most high-end version of anything at any given point, right? That any vendor can take out whatever they want to take out at any given point. However, I do understand where that sentiment comes from. So in light of that, you can actually buy this LCD separately from this cooler, right? You can actually, because if you, if you remove this cooler, the, the LCD rather, from this cooler, you're essentially dealing with an, a Hydro Series Elite cooler, right? With a few changes here and there. And I'll talk about those changes in a bit, but you can buy this separately. And I think you should buy it separately, it's about $99, which is a lot, but it is, again, a 24-bit IPS LCD that you're getting. The price for this cooler, asking around, it seems as if we were looking at around six and a half thousand rand, which is a staggering amount of money to ask for when coming when it comes to an air. Oh, you can actually build a custom loop for around the same amount of money. But if you are like me and just don't have the skill set and just don't have the time to build a custom loop, particularly with hard line tubing, right? With soft tubing, I've done that before. I think I did it for the Corsair MP600 Pro. So you can check out that video as well. I actually did a whole custom loop for that. And this is actually the second cooler that I'm testing with the LCD. The first one was the Water Force. I think the X, the X280. Yeah, that was, you can also check out that review, right? So I, I tested that one and I really liked the display um, and just the cooler in general. So this one is almost like a more refined version of that experience and in several ways. And a lot of it has to do with the software, which again, I will talk to you about. But let's just first start with the basics. What, what's in this package, right? And what, why does it cost so much? I'm hoping with what I'm gonna tell you with what's inside that it somehow justifies the costs. I still think it's hideously expensive, but let's start off with the LCD. So this LCD, as I said, is a 480 by 480 IPS display with 28 LEDs around it. Now, the cool thing that you can do here is obviously display system statistics, mainly CPU temperature, right? But you can also display a custom GIF or just a custom image. There are some other changes that actually are on this cooler that you may not be aware of. And that's with the fans. So the original Elite cooler came with the ML, I think it's the ML Pros, right? The Mag Maglev fans. But this one comes with the upgraded version, which is called the Elite. I'm not so sure if there's a difference between them, but regardless, I think that they're even better than the original ML fans. And from what I've experienced, they seem to be running a bit quieter, but don't quote me on that because it just could be the settings. And this actually speaks to all the improvements that Corsair has made with this cooler. A lot of those things are quality of life things. Those are, that's not necessarily temperature. And the reason I tell you all of this is because they've included for the first time an actual splitter for this USB 2.0 headers. So now what happens is that you're gonna plug in the commander which is included with this uh, H150 LCD model. You wanna plug in that commander, and then you're also going to plug in, let's say in my case, uh, Corsair PSU. What does that mean? It means that you're using up one header for both devices, meaning 
you still have another USB 2.0 header to use for any other peripheral you may have, or even just for your case, for those cases that still have USB 2.0 in the front. So this cable is one of the things that I appreciate about this cooler. It may seem like a small thing, but all those little small things come together to make a premium cooler and one that you actually enjoy using. For me though, the biggest advantage of this cooler, and in fact all Corsair coolers of late, is just IQ version 4. It's so much superior to what you're getting with other vendors, particularly motherboard vendors. With motherboard vendors, I have to say this, board vendors are notoriously bad with software. And this is something they actually need to address because as we go forward, we want to spend more time dealing with software than the hardware. And it's the same with the cooler. Once you've actually put it together and it's in your rig and it's running well and the temperatures are great, what you interact with every day is the software. So you can imagine if every single time you want to change a graphic, you want to configure something on your on your cooler and with an LCD, you are going to spend a lot of time there or at least more time than you would with just regular LEDs. Imagine having to do all of that through something like Aura Sync or even worse, RGB Fusion or, or the MSI software or, or, or Polychrome even, right? They are all just substandard. So in terms of putting together the cooler, man, what can I tell you? There's nothing easier to put together than Corsair AIOs. You just simply put in the back plate and then it's the four little screws and then oh i actually forgot to mention this so the block on this because the lcd part is detachable the block is actually quite small meaning when you are installing this it's so convenient you're not dealing with this bulky thing on top of the cpu where you're having to twist it get around motherboard limitations and components it's actually right there for you to use just Pop the top off the LCD and it has a little connector, this LCD that connects with and it's actually magnetic. So it's just pop it off and then screw in everything you need to. And when you're done, just pop it back in. Obviously it only fits in one orientation. So it's not twistable like what you got on the water force. Overall, I think this is a fantastic cooler. If you are looking for a cooler that is a premium, like I'm talking in terms of experience, cooling ability, presentation and so forth, it doesn't get much finer than this one, you know, it really doesn't. I think over the last few years, a lot of the things that Corsair has been working on are just quality of life improvements, just refining the products and the experience that you get with the Corsair products. Not only just the hardware making it better where possible, in the case of an AIO, it's not really much you can do, but it's actually in making everything else around the hardware improve so that the actual experience that you get with the cooler is much improved. And as a result of that, I have no qualms in recommending this cooler, provided you can get it for a decent price. Like again, I still think this is a lot of money. But if price is not an issue for you, you just want the best of the best, then definitely take a look at this. It's, it doesn't get much finer than this one. Anyway, with that said, let me know what you guys think of this cooler. Would you buy a cooler that's $259 or 6,500 here? And do you think that the LCD is worth that sort of money? Are you actually using this cooler right now? Because oddly enough, you may not be able to find it at some retailers, but I'm aware of some users that already have the cooler. So are you happy with it? Do you think this is worthwhile investment? Uh, what do you think of the build quality and just the entire Corsair user experience that you're getting with a lot of their products of late? Anyway, remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. So take care and peace.